This is a new Toyota Hilux pickup truck, and it's the Toyota truck the rest of the world gets. Here in North America, we have the Tacoma, but for many other countries, they get the Hilux instead. It's the Tacoma of the rest of the world. And today, I'm going to review this truck and show you what we're missing. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids with no fees. And we've had some great sales recently, including this Mercedes S65 AMG, which sold for $75,000, this fantastic Toyota Land Cruiser that sold for just over $35,000, and this wonderful B. BMW 3 Series wagon, which brought almost $28,000. We love wagons on cars and bids. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it, with daily auctions and great selection at carsandbids.com. So let's talk Hilux. Many years ago, the Toyota Hilux was the very same as the Toyota pickup that we got here in North America. But in the early 2000s, they split. We got a more America-focused truck in the Toyota Tacoma, and Toyota went a different direction with the Hilux in most of the rest of the world. I've borrowed this Hilux from a viewer in Mexico, where this truck is still sold new, and it's a quad cap model with a diesel engine, and today I'm going to review it. First, I'll take you on a thorough tour of this truck and show you all the tricks and features of the pickup that we don't get. Then I'll get it out on the road and drive it, and and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the Hilux with a little overview of exactly what this truck is. Like I said, this is Toyota's compact midsize pickup truck in the rest of the world. It's essentially a Tacoma for the rest of the world, although it doesn't really share anything with the Tacoma. It's completely distinct and separate and not sold in North America. So you might be wondering why exactly does the rest of the world need a different truck from the one we have in the United States? Why separate these two trucks? which are about the same size. Here's the answer. Here in America, trucks aren't necessarily used for utility. Instead, they're often used for flexing and showing off and being cool. And also, they're much more frequently used for normal everyday driving, family transportation, just commuting, than they are in the rest of the world. So the Tacoma is designed with that in mind. It has more muscular, bulky, cool looking styling and it's more luxurious, smoother, calmer, nicer for day-to-day -day driving. In other markets, trucks are more for utility. People in most other countries aren't using trucks to show off or to commute in cities every day, which is common in the States. So trucks are more focused on utility. They're stripped down, they're basic, and they don't have as much equipment or as much visual flair and kind of muscular, cool excitement to the look. And frankly, you can tell that's true on the outside of this truck just by a simple glance at it. It is cool to have a Hilux here in the United States. One of the few people who does, but it's not like anybody's going to notice. This truck has a very generic look to it, very simple, not much visual flair or excitement or coolness, unlike most trucks sold in the United States. The Tacoma really does have a muscular kind of cool look to it, but not this. It's very basic, very simple, kind of blends in. They didn't add any excitement or creativity to this design. It would have added cost to design it and to stamp all the materials. It just wasn't necessary. And under the hood, there's another great example of this truck's all-out focus on utility. This has a diesel engine, which is pretty cool. A compact mid-sized truck with diesel power. You don't often see that here in the United States, but you have it here. Now, this powertrain is a four-cylinder diesel that makes about 200 horsepower, but 330 to 340 pound-feet of torque, which is a very healthy figure. By comparison, the Tacoma in the States, its gas V6 only has about 265 pound-feet of torque. So this engine isn't very powerful, acceleration's not going to be great, but it can pull stuff or haul stuff in the bed. That's what it's for, utility. 
And next up, more on this truck's utility focus. Listen to this number. A Hilux in Mexico starts at around $20,000. 20 grand for a brand new midsize pickup is completely unheard of here in the United States. Now, admittedly, that's a chassis cab model with no bed on the back, but even a standard Hilux with a bed starts around $24,000, which is still exceptionally cheap for a truck like this. Meanwhile, a Tacoma in the United States starts around $28,000 thousand dollars for the very most basic models so this really undercuts it on price again it's all about utility cheapness basicness aimed at people who really need the functions of a truck but don't want to spend big money for any extra frills but anyway keep that basicness and utility focus in mind because it's going to be a big theme all throughout this video next i want to move on to some exterior quirks although there aren't really all that many because this truck is so basic on the outside one good example of that is daytime running lights. You know how most vehicles in North America have a cool LED light signature to distinguish them? Well, this doesn't. In fact, it doesn't have any daytime running lights at all, which is very uncommon. Most cars in the U.S. have them. In Canada, they're mandatory, but this truck doesn't have it. Another thing missing on the outside, the Toyota logo in the grill is just a Toyota logo, which shouldn't be that surprising, but in most modern Toyotas in the States, it's a sensor for the radar cruise control control system and the forward collision warning. Not here. This truck doesn't have any of that stuff, so the logo on the grill is just a regular badge. Beyond that, there's really not that much to talk about on the outside of this truck. It's very simple, very basic. The owner added this bull bar up front. This doesn't come from the factory. This is an aftermarket modification. Same deal with these side steps rock slider combo that was added by the owner for a little bit more capability. And same deal with this rear steel bump it was also added by the owner. The regular truck doesn't come with any of that stuff. All was put on to add some flair and excitement because this truck doesn't really have all that much. But anyway, on the outside of this truck and on the subject of its simplicity, let's talk bed. And let's start with the tailgate. Now, there is no button on the key fob to pop open the tailgate for this truck. You just have lock, unlock, and the alarm. Most trucks sold in America, you press a button and the tailgate drops down, but that's not the case here. However, this truck is sold with just this key fob and not a separate metal key. And that means that if you want to unlock or lock the tailgate, you have to pull the little spare key part out of the key fob and insert the key into the tailgate in order to lock or unlock. Interesting to make buyers have to do this. Most Americans don't even know their key fob contains a little extra spare key, but here it's actually part of using the truck in normal operation. But anyway, you open up the tailgate and you will discover that the bed, again, very simple, very basic. You don't have any cool cargo management system back here or special gear storage area or whatever. You just get a bed. Plastic line, simple, easy, no frills, truck bed. Again, with a focus on basic and utility. That is the theme of this truck. Although I will say there is one nice little flourish back here. That would be the Toyota logo on the back side of the bed, surrounded by a little bit of design and style kind of making you feel a little bit special about your truck bed. But otherwise, it's all utility. Now, another interesting item back here in the bed, if you look at the rear window, you'll notice that it doesn't open. Most American pickup trucks, the rear window, usually a portion of it slides open for more cabin ventilation, but not here. They've removed that. Again, it's all about basic, simple utilities. So nice little cool touches that you might want from a family truck. They've been removed for the utilitarian and high luck. By the way, on the subject of the key, which I was just talking about, one cool thing about it, you have the buttons on one side, but you flip it over and it says Hilux with a cool graphic showing the truck. That is one of the only cool touches and frills that you really get with this truck. A little graphic of it on the key fob. Kind of a neat little touch. But anyway, next up you climb inside the Hilux and you quickly realize that utility and basicness is the name of the game in here too. And you realize that immediately when you look around 
around and see the materials. Take a look at the door panel. You can see primarily cheap plastic, not especially nice or high quality, but utilitarian. It's stuff that's durable, that'll last, but that doesn't add to the cost of this truck. And that cheap plastic is carried over basically everywhere in this interior. You have it on the dashboard. You can see lots of cheap plastic everywhere you look. Same deal in the center console, just cheap plastic on and on and on. That's the point. It's utility, it's basic, and it makes the truck less expensive. Now, another way you can tell this truck has been, let's say, decontented from an American vehicle is the infotainment system. This is a factory Toyota infotainment system, amazingly. Even though it looks like some cheap third-party aftermarket unit you just slapped in there to replace a simple factory stereo. This is the stock infotainment in this truck, and it's not really all that useful. The buttons are small, the screens are little, it's not incredibly intuitive. In order to turn the volume up or down, there's no knob. Instead, you just tap, 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 tap this little space on the side. It doesn't have Apple CarPlay, it doesn't have Android Auto, and in fact, it doesn't even have a backup camera. This is a federal government mandate for all vehicles sold in the United States, but in Mexico, there's no such mandate, and so Toyota doesn't give you a backup camera, even though this is the top end trim of the Hilux. No camera in here in this kind of crappy factory infotainment system that looks like some stupid aftermarket thing. And next up on the subject of screens, you do have a screen in the gauge cluster, as you can see here, a screen in the center, full color, but it's very basic in keeping with the theme in this truck. You pretty much only have like trip data, fuel economy data, and that's about it in this screen. No like phone information here or media, music information, and obviously no navigation since this truck doesn't have a nav system. So you have a gauge cluster screen, but again, very basic, very utilitarian, very simple. But anyway, next up on the subject of utility, one cool quirk in this interior is quite a bit of cup holders, including a rather clever one. You have cup holders in the center here, like you do in most vehicles, nothing unusual there. You also have cup holders in the door panel, kind of molded into the plastic for water bottles or larger cups. But then you have extras in the dashboard. Press on this little panel on the passenger side and a cup holder pops out. And you can do the same thing over on the driver's side. Press here, cup holder pops out. So you have one within easy reach of your hands when they're on the steering wheel, which is pretty cool. And these cup holders can also be storage trays. Push in the cup part and then suddenly you have a little storage tray that you can put stuff other than cups, which frankly is a great feature and a great idea. And I don't know why Toyota hasn't put this in some of its North American vehicles yet, because I think it would be kind of a hit. Now, next up, also on the subject of utility, this truck doesn't have much, but it does have four-wheel drive. And you can see the little switch here to put it in four-wheel drive. There's also four-wheel drive low, so two-range four-wheel drive, which is nice. And you have a locking differential. You can see the button here, press that, locker goes on again to maximize utility. Another interesting thing that you have is two separate drive modes. You can see there's an eco mode and then also a power mode. <laughs> I guess you can go into either of those depending on whether you want to be eco or power. And then of course, you can also just drive the truck in normal mode if you don't activate either of those with their buttons. Now, next up, another nice feature this truck has is air conditioning. Not all sort of low end entry market vehicles have AC, but in Mexico, it's really important to have. And so most Hiluxes do, including this one. You also have an air conditioned glove box. Check this out. The upper part of the dashboard on the passenger side is actually a glove box. You press the Hilux logo here and that opens it up, which is kind of clever and cool. But once it's open, you can use that as an air conditioned glove box. Now there's also a traditional standard glove box on the lower part of the dash, which is an air conditioned. And that's where like the owner's manual is and maybe registration paperwork. But the air conditioned upper part would be nice for like keeping your lunch cool on a warm day. Neat idea. But while that might be cool for going out on a job site all day working, again, I want to draw your attention to some of the lack of frills and cool touches this truck has. For example, no sunroof. Trucks at this level in the United States generally have a sunroof, but you don't have one here. You also don't have adaptive cruise control. Most Toyota models sold in the United States offer that usually as standard equipment. That's Toyota's big push with their safety sense system to make you feel just how safe it is. Well, the Hilux doesn't have it. You do have cruise control, but only basic cruise. No forward collision warning, no adaptive, no blind spot monitoring, no lane departure warning. You don't get any of that stuff in this truck, even though this is the highest end model, like I mentioned. You also don't get any USB 
ports in here. No USB-C, no USB-A. You just have two cigarette lighter style outlets that you can pop open and then you can stick some aftermarket device in there to charge your phone or whatever, but no USB ports in here, which is unheard of in a modern vehicle in the 2020s. But this truck is all about being basic and simple. And of course, on the subject of charging your devices, you also don't have a wireless charger. You have some storage trays in the center console, but no wireless charging pad at all. That is not something you get here. Basic utility. That's what the Hilux is all about. Amazingly, even the floor mats are not personalized to this truck. You look at these rubber utilitarian floor mats and you can see they say Hilux slash Fortuner slash SW4, which are other Toyota models sold in other countries, meaning these floor mats aren't even like designed just for the Hilux. They go in multiple different vehicles. There's no feeling of like uniqueness or look at my cool Hilux mats. <laughs> just put one mat in all of these vehicles and don't bother personalizing. Again, no point spending the money. It's just not what this truck is about. And next up, we move on to the back seat in this truck, which amazingly is even more utilitarian than the front. You might not think that's possible, but in fact, it is. For one thing, it's pretty tight back here. There's not a whole lot of room, which is uncommon in American midsize quad cab pickup trucks. You get a lot more space because people are using them for family duty. They put their kids in back, whatever. Here, it's intended to be a utility truck. You put a few workers in back to drive to the job site, but nobody really has to be excessively comfortable back here. And that point is especially underscored by the fact that there's nothing back here. You don't have climate controls, which is really no surprise, but you also don't have climate vents back here. And you don't even have chargers in the back. So USB, that kind of thing, all new cars have that in the back seat, but not the Hilux. I guess I shouldn't be surprised since there's also no USB in the front. It is very, very basic and simple back here. Now, interestingly, you do have hooks on the backs of the front seats. You can see them here. They pop open as like clothes hooks, which is odd. I've never seen that before, but this truck has it, I guess, so you can hang clothes or gear or whatever. You also have the ability to lift up the seat bottom. You pull this little strap and that releases it, and then you can pull the seat bottom up and it gives you access to a couple of hidden compartments. It kind of looks like just carpeting under there, but this opens up and you can see a decent sized compartment where you can stick stuff if you want to keep it out of sight from anybody in the interior or you don't want it rolling around in the bed, a little cargo compartment in there. Now, one cool thing about that strap you use to release the seat bottom is that it also has a couple of snaps on it, as you can see, and you can use that strap to wrap it around the base of the headrest and then snap it in place, which will keep the seat bottom lifted up and it won't come back down. Now, this is especially neat because it means the seat bottom can stay up while you're rooting around in these little storage areas under the seat and you don't have to worry about it falling on you, which is a cool idea. And it also means you can put the seat up more or less permanently and then you can put like a dog back here if you don't want it climbing on the seats getting things dirty it can just be on the floor or if you have larger items you want to stick in back but you don't want to put them on the seats or there's not enough space you can just pin the seat bottom to the seat back and you'll have more room in back which is kind of neat now one other item i found back here is this giant pouch I found it. It didn't really take much effort searching. It is massive and it is heavy. This is a kind of combination road safety pouch with like a warning triangle slash also tire changing stuff is in here slash also tools are in here like wrenches and pliers and that sort of thing. And it comes with this vehicle. Now I've reviewed a few of these Mexican market cars and they always seem to come with a giant pouch like this with tools and other items that you wouldn't really expect to find in a US car. We don't get these massive tool pouches, but you do in Mexico. I guess the market down there and the culture is such that there's an expectation you will get tools and other equipment with your new vehicle because most of the Mexican new cars I've reviewed have had a big pouch like this, obviously including this one. And so those are the quirks and features of the new Toyota Hilux. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the 
Hilux. And this is really cool. Driving a foreign market vehicle in the States, I always find that to be cool. I think it's cool when I see Hiluxes in San Diego. You see them pretty often driving around. And now it's cool to be in one. A couple things before I get into the driving experience about this truck. Number one, sizing. It is pretty much about the same as the Tacoma. This is a quad cab short bed. Hilux is not offered in as many body styles and stuff as American pickup trucks, but relative to a quad cab short bed Tacoma, it's only a couple inches different. Also powertrain. Like I said, this is a diesel engine, 200 horsepower, 300 some pound feet. There's also a base model four cylinder gas powered available, but that's it. You don't have a big V6 offered in the Hilux. It's kind of utilitarian, simplified engines. Uh, and so this is the diesel. So how does it drive? The answer is the first thing you notice when you get on a road, any sort of rough road, is it's pretty unsettled, frankly. Like it drives kind of rough and you don't have a lot of comfort. And this obviously fits in with all the other stuff I've been saying throughout this video about the basic utilitarian nature of this vehicle. It feels like that when you're just cruising it around as well. It is pretty rough and tumble and doesn't have kind of a luxurious feel to it. Uh, not that the Tacoma does, but this is even more utilitarian than the Tacoma. It definitely feels like not as much thought has been paid to making like a luxurious vehicle with a luxurious uh, suspension setting. And it even feels like it's not intended to be used every day, which is in fact the case. This is not a daily driver car in the kind of markets where this car is popular. It's a truck you use for utility purposes, which is unusual to a lot of Americans, but in other markets, that is in fact the case. Now, flooring it here, I have to say I'm pretty impressed with this diesel powertrain. I'm not a big diesel fan, um, but I like it in trucks and big SUVs, and it works well here. And I like it because it kind of mitigates the size of the vehicle. You kind of get all this nice torque, and you feel like you have something on tap, uh, especially around town. Even if you're not going fast, you just have this kind of bulky, muscular feel. You feel like you could be pulling or hauling or whatever, and I think it works reasonably well. It seems like a pretty good powertrain, but boy, this ride quality. It's not like it's harsh or rough. It's just that it's like not nice. It's not like well kept or proper or, or you know, focused on comfort or it's just uh, imagine, you know, 90s trucks that you drove, old Ford Rangers and stuff back before trucks really became lifestyle statements. This has kind of a modern feel of that. Now, I will also say the driving position is great. You're sitting up very high in this truck. You don't have sort of the attitude interior that you get in the Tacoma and certainly the same is true of the exterior as well. It's fine in here, but but, oh, <laughs> it just beats you up. It's fine in here, but it's not like really like cool. You know, that's, I think that's the big thing. The big difference is that the Hilux just isn't cool, whereas American trucks really try to be. Now, I do want to make one important point here. You might be thinking, well, why would anyone then care about this? If you're in America, our trucks are cooler, they're better. But there is a subset of people who really like the Hilux and the, the idea of the Hilux, the ethos of the Hilux, because it's just for utility. It's, it's a simple, long-lasting, durable, inexpensive vehicle, and you don't get any of the frills that you get with pickup trucks in the States. You don't care about a sunroof. You don't care about, you know, Apple CarPlay. You just want a truck that can go out on the land and do stuff. And there are buyers like that, although Toyota feels not many. Toyota thinks the Tacoma makes more sense for most Americans. But there is still a sub set of Americans who think, damn, I wish I had a truck that really was a truck, just pure utility. And that is this. Otherwise, you know, from a driving perspective, it's not really all that unusual or special. I like the diesel powertrain. I think it's good. Obviously a lot of torque. The ride is kind of rough, but otherwise you're in sort of a cheap feeling Toyota. It almost has kind of a rental car feel to it, like the kind of vehicle you expect to go and rent. And that's what it's all about. It's like cheap utility and it, it works reasonably well. And, and this, I guess, is what we're missing out on here in the States. Pro and con, you know, our trucks are nicer. They're better. They're more exuberant, you know, in how they look. We have more equipment, but we also lose this sort of like basic utility thing, which is, I guess, where the Ford Maverick is trying to go right now. But from a truck perspective of a truck this size, we don't have this here. And it's interesting to check it out and see. And there's gonna be a lot of people watching and say, I would buy that truck if they would just bring it here. And I don't doubt that. I think this would sell to a segment of the population that just wants a simple work truck that'll last forever. Um, but the Tacoma, 
Toyota makes more money, and it, and it seems like Toyota thinks it appeals to a much wider range of American shoppers. And so that's the latest Toyota Hilux, basically the Tacoma for the rest of the world. This is an interesting truck, definitely more of a utilitarian flair than the Tacoma, and very interesting to see, considering that most truck people and Toyota people wonder just what it is that makes the Hilux different from Toyota pickups we get here in North America. Well, now you know, and now it's time to give the Hilux a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 45 out of 100, which places the Hilux diesel here against some similar trucks sold in America. This truck is a good one, but it's pretty basic, and that's why it works well in markets where trucks are for using, not for off-roading or family hauling or showing off. For American tastes, I actually think the Hilux wouldn't be very popular, and that's reflected in the Doug score where it lags behind most other mid-sized trucks in features, acceleration, and styling. Where the Hilux is a hit is value. It's not the most stylish or the best equipped, but if you want a truck to do truck stuff, the Hilux is a good option for not huge money. And for that reason, it's a shame it's not offered in the States. Ah! 